Hello and welcome back. And that is right, this isn't my usual location for recording these videos. I'm currently in Vegas. I'm here for CES. We'll be covering quite a lot of some interesting NAS releases that are going to be coming up over the course of the next week or so. But before I got on the plane, a little bit of news arrived with me regarding that brand Link Plus. Remember those guys about a year ago? More than a year actually. It was about 17 months ago. We were talking about a new NAS solution from them, the Link Station N1, a six bay NVMe and SATA NAS solution that rocked out with an Intel Celeron processor, 16 gig of memory, and it went to crowdfunding. Now, fast forward, it's available on traditional retail. It's a decent little NAS regularly on, on offer. And it looks like Link Plus have not taken their foot off the gas. They've got two new NAS solutions in development. Now, we can talk about the newest update to the N series there. There's still unconfirmed a number of details about this. But I will say the first detail, we don't know if this is going to flat out replace the N1 or if this is going to be an extension of that portfolio. This is the Link Station N2. It's utilizing the same two sides. SSD for NVMe profile as the original there, but they've scaled up that CPU. Now with an N100 processor, this N100 processor here, quad core, much more recent release, it was Q1 2023 when that processor came out, allows this system to, although not add much more in terms of lanes, changing out an eight lane CPU for a nine lane, does mean that those uh, individual M2 NVMe's, likely at the same gen and speed as its predecessor, are gonna be able to stretch their muscles a bit more. But the newer generation, N2 also is going to arrive with 10 GBE on board. Now, after that, details are a little bit sketchier. From that point, I'm still waiting for confirmation on one whether that is the only port it's going to arrive with there, or there's going to be a secondary port there for like failover, perhaps a 2.5 gig, maybe a 1 gig. And also whether this system is going to arrive via a traditional retail, or they're going to reapproach what they did before with the Link Station N1 and release it via crowdfunding. There again, your Indiegogo's, your crowd supply, your Kickstarter. We're still waiting for confirmation, but realistically, they probably will. They're not an enormous brand, predominantly making their name in tablets and uh, laptop devices. There, so again, they're still stretching their muscles in the world of network attached storage. But nevertheless, it's still interesting that they're further develop, developing this NVMe system there and thanks to it being the N100 that does also mean that even if it has the same memory on board it's going to be DDR5 rather than DDR4. Now the other device is the LinkStation S1. This is a four bay SATA 3.5 inch hard drive and two NVMe NAS system. Again, this is standard profile, a four bay NAS, something everybody loves with two NVMe slots, which everybody loves. This system though, doesn't look like it's gonna arrive for 10 GBE. I saw support of 2.5 GBE, two ports to be precise, but I didn't see any further information with regards to a 10 GBE upgrade, which is a little disheartening. The CPU inside isn't the N100, but it is the N97. So that's part of that Alder Lake series where you have the N100, the N305, the N95, and the N97 here. Again, slight scale up over the N95, but not quite as punchy as that N100 that we talked that. Also, it would have been nice to see them use that i3 um, 8 core processor, the N305, but given we're starting to see Intel refresh a lot of those CPUs with the N125 and the N, uh, I believe, um, 325, I think that is... They were probably going to be quite expensive CPUs, so they're probably getting something of a bargain there. But again, all of these are subject to confirmation and subject to change if, more likely, this is going to be another solution heading for crowdfunding. I know it's not going to be to everyone's taste. I think established brands that utilize crowdfunding that is predominantly an indie platform i know ruffle some feathers and i'm with you on that but there's no denying that a lot of eastern brands particularly a lot of the ones that are heavily uh, kind of based in china and operating out of china generally use a lot of these crowdfunding platforms like kickstarter as marketing vehicles allowing their product to be kind of presented on a global scale via those platforms. Again, for good, for bad, whether we like it or not, ultimately it means that if this, either of these products are coming to crowdfunding, 
do not treat it like a traditional retail product there. Keep in mind that crowdfunding, you are backing an idea, you are backing a hypothetical there, you are not backing a physical product in the same way that you do at traditional retail. Everyone that backed the Link Stationary One got their products and it was a successful campaign, so much so that it went to retail. So I'm inclined to think this is going to eventually, if both of them go to crowdfunding, a roll out and arrive to people's doorsteps. But just keep in mind with something like this, it isn't traditional retail, this is crowdfunding, if that is the case. But if we step out of the quagmire of crowdfunding and traditional retail, it is worth highlighting that it does look like these are both gonna arrive with unraid licenses, just like the original LinkStation N1, which means these are both turnkey Unraid powered solutions there. Keep in mind Unraid now, version seven. Um, I believe the re release candidate is either on the precipice or about to roll out. And that means, again, ZFS support there, an improved GUI and lots of features and facilities that are built into the new version of Unraid that you, the buyer of a turnkey now solution, because this is turnkey, are going to enjoy with both of these solutions. But that's really everything I've got. These are both going to be CPU power devices that have got integrated graphics on board. Therefore, HDMI output, 10 gig USB support on both of these CPUs means a KVM setup is possible. We don't know much more than that. I'd like to confirm more about the network ports when I know more. And there is an article link below over on NAS Compares. We detailed all of these specifications and I'll update them over time. But I just wanted to get this video out there before we get into the release mayhem that is going to be CES. Remember a number of brands that we're going to be talking about there i didn't want this to be lost in the noise but let me know what you guys think were you a previous uh, backer or now an owner of the link station n1 are you happy with what you got there or are you someone that have purchased it and thought hang on there's a 10g option coming around the corner i've missed out let me know what you guys think in the comments but apart from that thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for our coverage during ces see you later